This is quiz one extra practice for Math 1342 Calculus 2. Quiz one um, covers both of these sections, which is antiderivative, substitution by parts, and partial fractions. Okay, so we have five integrals here for just a little bit extra practice for a quiz. We begin with the first one. And um, you notice we have a sum of two terms. This term, you might think substitution. In fact, technically it is, but I will remind you something that we discussed in class. If we integrate, say, I'll say it in terms of y, e to the a y dy, where a is a constant, we get one over a, one over a, and then e to the a y plus c. And so I can use that here, for example, Maybe before I actually integrate this, though, let me take one small step and I will write this second term as a power. It's one half times y to the minus five. Now is when I am ready. This first e to the minus seven y, this is just minus one over seven e to the minus seven y. And then we have a half times, well, this one's power rule y to the minus four divided by minus four. We add a power and divide by the higher power. And perhaps I will just take one more step here. Minus one seventh e to the minus seven y. Then it's going to be minus one over eight. And we have minus the y to the minus four plus c. You could also put this in the denominator with a positive four as the exponent but it's perfectly fine just like this. So this is number one, and we can move on to number two. Number two, substitution. I hope you say, because here we have an inside function, natural log, but more than that, we have a multiple of its derivative in the integrand. And so u is ln t du, is one over t dt. Now handed to me in my integral is not exactly du. We have one over four t dt. And you can see the multiplier here. This is one fourth du. You can check. Just multiply both sides here by a fourth and you will get exactly this next line. So that is my work for beginning substitution, and then this integral becomes, we have u to the 5 halves times 1 over 4 du. If you remember my five steps of substitution, so far we have u, du, integral of u. We have the first three. We need to integrate, and then we will go back to t and be finished. So this also is power rule. We add a power and divide by the higher power. This is u to the 7 halves over 7 halves. And then the final step, we go back to t. But also in the final step, you see, I'm going to make this look a little nicer. We don't want to leave 7 halves in our denominator. If we um, invert and multiply, it will be 2 over 7 times 4 or 1 over 2 times 7. This is 1 over 14. And then we have um, L and T to the seven halves plus C. Okay. And this is our answer to number two. Number three, well, I did this on purpose. If we look, right, we just did this, which was substitution. And now we're doing this. You notice both of them have L and T, and both of them have a t somewhere above them have a four, but four is just a constant. But uh, this first one, number two, as you know, as substitution, this second one is by parts because while well, we have a product, four t times natural log t, and it's not an obvious substitution. This suggests integration by parts. If we follow our acronym, immediately we have a log. And so, u will be ln t and dv will be everything else 4t dt now you could just as a comment you could group this four 
with the natural log if you wanted to, but I just grouped it with the t. Now, we take the derivative, 1 over t dt, and to calculate v, we integrate. This will be 2t squared. Integration by parts goes uv minus the integral of v du. So this is my box of work. So I have uv would be 2t squared ln t minus the integral of 2t squared over t dt. Now what I need to do is simplify this integral just using properties of exponents. We have 2t squared ln t minus, this will be um, just 2t dt. And now one more step and I've finished with this problem. We have 2t squared ln t and then minus t squared plus c. This one is number three. Four, this is also integration by parts. Again, we see a product. I mean, it's not an obvious substitution. Of course, here we do have an inside function, but this is just a constant times x. And I will remind us, kind of like I did moments ago, if we just have the cosine of ax dx, well, this would be a one over a and now integrate. This would be sine, positive sine of ax plus c. So I'm going to use this here. So we see a product, this times this, and it's not an obvious substitution in the sense of having a multiple of the derivative. If we saw something different like this, just as a comment, this would be substitution, right? And you should think about that on your own time, it's definitely worth doing. Here, even though these look similar, one is by parts, one is substitution. And here we do have an inside function and a multiple of its derivative. Okay, but back to number four. If we follow, again, this Liotte acronym, we do not have a log, we do not have an inverse trig, but we do have this algebraic. This would just be the x, so u, is x and dv is everything else, including the dx. So we have cosine 3x over 2 dx. Okay. And um, like I was saying in class, if you multiply u times dv, you should have everything in your integral except for the integral sign. If you don't, something is wrong. But now we differentiate du is dx. And we integrate, and this is what I was um, reviewing over here, right? Here, a is three over two. So one over a would be two over three. And then we have the sine three x over two. These are all the pieces that I need. Then we have uv minus the integral v du. So this goes 2x over 3 sine 3x over 2. And then subtract off the integral, we have 2 over 3 sine 3x over 2 dx. OK, we have one more step, which is to integrate here. But you notice it's another a times x on the inside. In fact, a here is also 3 over 2. So when we integrate this last term, first of all, let me just copy. We have 2 over 2x two over 3 sine 3x over 2. OK. Now, thinking about the SIGN, OK, we have a negative. When we integrate the sine, we get negative cosine. So we're going to have another negative altogether. This is going to be plus. And then we will have 2 over 3 times 2 over 3. This will be 4 over 9. The first 2 over 3 is here. The second 2 over 3 in this product comes when we integrate. And we have this 1 over 8 coming out. And then we have cosine 3x over 2. And at the very end, we put one plus C. So this is the answer to number four.
Number five, partial fractions decomposition. This one came off a recent final exam. Um, some of the other words may too, but this one definitely did. So the first thing we wanna do in a partial fractions decomposition is figure out the general form. In this case, the general form is A over X plus three, because we have this one distinct linear term. And then this part, X squared plus one, this is an irreducible quadratic. So we have a BX plus C over this irreducible quadratic. This is our general form. Now, step two, get a common denominator and add these two. My common denominator is the product of the two denominators. And so I have a x squared plus one, and then plus bx plus c times x plus three. Now, um, maybe before I set the two numerators equal, right? That's the next step because we want this to be equal to this, right? And they have the exact same denominator. And so I will just set the two numerators equal. But let me just take a moment and multiply this out. I'll write it right above, say in pink. This is, it's bx squared, that's first, and then outer is three bx, and then inner is cx, and then last is three c. Okay, so that is what this product is. And now I'm ready to set my two numerators equal. I have five x squared plus seven x, and then plus six. And this will equal, well, something times x squared plus something times x. And then we will have this constant. Well, the x squared, we have a plus b. In front of the x, we have 3b plus c. And then the constant, we have 3c plus a. Now, the way this works, right, this equation holds for all x. And so what we do is we set this equal to this. We will get three equations and three unknowns. We set this equal to this, and we set this equal to this. And that will help us solve for constants a, b, and c. So here, our equations are a plus b equals five. We have three b plus c equals seven, and three c plus a equals six. What I typically will do is take two of them and look at the third. The third equation just has C and A. And so uh, let's take the first two and get rid of the B. I can do this by multiplying times minus three and then adding these two. And when we do, we have minus three A, minus three B, plus three B zero. So then we have plus C and this will equal uh, seven minus 15, which is negative eight. Underneath this, let's just write this down. Three C plus A equals six. Now I can use these two equations to solve for A and C. So we can take, for example, three times this one, this will get rid of the A's and add. I get C plus 9C, which is 10C. And this equals minus 8 plus 18, which is 10. We have found the first one. C is 1, which is so fantastic because once you find the first, you are in great shape to move on to the other two. So here's the first one, C is one. Once I have this, for example, this bottom line here, this would say three plus A is six. Let's write that, three plus A is six and we get A is three. Now we have A and C. So for example, maybe I'll go back to the first equation here. This one says, 
a plus b is five. Well, when a is three, we have three plus b is five. Three plus b is five. And we get b is two. So we have our three coefficients, a, b, and c. That was the hard part, I think, of these problems is being careful with the algebra. So now we can integrate. We're ready. Maybe I'll switch to black for the integration. We have a over x plus 3. And then we have bx plus c over x squared plus 1. dx. Well, I will break this into a sum of three integrals. In fact, this first one, maybe I'll go ahead and integrate because this is just three times ln absolute value x plus three. So we have three ln absolute value x plus three, but then I will break this one into a sum. We have two x over x squared plus one dx, and then the integral of one over x squared plus one dx, okay? You might see, at least I hope you see this one, substitution. In fact, we have exactly du. U is here, it's in the denominator. This is one place we look for an inside function. And du is just 2x dx. So let me write this in another color below. Just for this integral, we will use substitution. U is x squared plus one, du is 2x dx. And we have exactly du in our integral. I can put this in a box. Now this part, this is the tan inverse, right? This is just tan inverse of x when we integrate. So let's go to the next line. We have, well, this part we just recopy, 3 ln absolute value of x plus 3. And then we have an integral of 1 over u du. Now, just like I was saying here, we can go ahead and integrate this part. This is tan inverse of x. We have two more steps. First, in this second term, which is really the only part I'm working with, I integrate with respect to u. This is ln absolute value of u. Uh, everything else, as you can see, I just recopy. And then finally, in this middle term, we go back to x. And it's here. u is x squared plus 1. The final step is composition. So we have 3 ln absolute value x plus 3. We have plus ln absolute value x squared plus 1. And then the third term is tan inverse of x and plus c. This part, all of these terms, this is our final answer. And this is the end of our quiz one extra practice. So thank you very much and good luck on the quiz.